Greetings YouTube, it has been a while since we as a community had the strong united opinions and overall backlash that we have voiced in the past few days to Kabam about the reopening of the rebalancing discussion. And so Kabam Mike attempted to do some damage control in the past couple days and a shout out to my man Brian Shadow Strike for keeping me updated with screenshots and posts these are screenshots by the way so if you're asking like where's the link on this this is strictly photos that i'm reacting to in comments uh you can see that don 2023 said disappointed 100 percent what's the point now i'm putting six stones into my six star hercules you guys are going to nerf like there's no tomorrow complete bs screw trying to get new champs i hope this blows up in your faces now that is what quite a few people have communicated to me, have echoed to me, and in a G-rated sense, because uh, there was no profanity used. Here's what's interesting, though. Kabam Mike, in an attempt to try to get some uh, damage control done, said, this does not affect older champions, but those coming starting in March. This also doesn't affect February champions, apparently. So, there's a lot to say. I mean, I could do, God, a 20-minute video just on this one image. We've got others, so we're not going to spend all that time. But here, here are my thoughts on this. First off, it's good news if you're worried about champs like Kitty Pride or Hercules or Null or Shang-Chi, right? They're allegedly not going to be touched. And if they get tweaked even to 1% less than they are, we should, save, we should save this and see this forum post forever because it is Kabam Mike's word that no champion before March of 2022 will be nerfed even to 1% of what they are now. However, if you know, starting in March, which by the way, March was the same month as patch 12.0 i know this because march is also my birthday month so it's a big deal to me march was also when the pandemic really hit in 2020 um march just seems to be a month that command like circles on their calendar i don't know if it's because it's like sort of in between when the january calendar resets but also before july 4th with sp sales but then again april is typically spring cleaning sales after the last two years. So so who knows why March is always such a historic month for, for this game, this this company. But here's here's the main point I want to argue. Like now for the next Kitty Pride or Hercules or Shang-Chi or Null, you name it, if we know that there's a separate set of rules that could dictate a tune down in the same degree that they tune down Cold City and a Namor why spend hundreds or thousands of units or dollars on the champion? Why spend the hours grinding for them in the arena if there's even a 1% chance that they're going to be uh, tuned down? It's going to basically put Kabam in a position where they're going to lose tons of money. And I'm going to cover this in the next post, but um, there's something, even though no one likes to get bad pulls, there's something kind of good about it. So, Ben SHB says, Quake has literally two things next to uh, its name, and she is still one of the most broken OP characters after five and a half years. That's why Kabam won't release her as a six star. It will be extremely difficult to bring up a ranking system, since as Kabam keeps on agreeing with it, with 200 plus champs, MCOC has become a super complicated game in terms of character Usage, by the way, I think about, because I don't, I don't know about you, maybe it's just me, but when I first downloaded the game seven years ago, I was kind of overwhelmed by how much there was to learn, and it almost caused me to delete the app. I didn't know what Alliance Quest was, what Alliance War was, I didn't know what Alliance was, and there were so many different champions that I was just overwhelmed. The game has evolved so much since then, that looking back on that, that's like being intimidated by the third grade and now it's like AP calculus senior year of high school I don't know how people download this game now and aren't just so overwhelmed by everything that they want to quit 
And so Kabam is facing a pretty difficult task of keeping the whales and the end gamers um, excited about the game while still trying to grow it with newer players. I don't know how they do it. I do not envy them for that. But uh, Kabam Mike's response to this was, "This is not a ranking system, and we'll be saying and will not be saying one champion is better than another, but a summary of abilities that will help you compare champions based on individual factors such as damage or survivability." But many champions can occupy the same rating. For example, both Hercules and Corvus Glaive will probably score a 5 out of 5 in damage output. I mean, this is basically like trying to dumb down champions we know for newer people. The rating system to me is still subjective. I mean, we have debated the top 10, top 15, and what tier champions are since the beginning. And we owe a lot of credit to Seton because he started that trend and will always be the number one content creator and the number one voice in the community. And I think that's a great thing overall. Uh, with that being said, I, I still think, like, what would you rather the Kabam uh, designers do? Make a writing system that's still, again, subjective for every champion? Or fix and improve the game, right? Like, I still feel like it's a huge waste of time. It's like making up a whole bunch of new profile picks. If we never have a new profile pick again, but the game works, great. One affects players every day, one doesn't. Okay, so, speaking of which, C White 318 says, Here you guys go again with something else that we didn't need in the game. I'm done spending with you guys, period. You guys always seem to make everything worse with the game. Instead of balance... Come out with some new content or change characters, special attack animations or something, but this is trash. Uh, my wallet is permanently closed and will never, ever spend with you guys again. Now, uh-oh, Kabam Mike says, I have to disagree. Pull up a chair, grab some popcorn. Let's see what he has to say. Balancing is necessary in all games like this, and we have lagged behind... Because we haven't had the ability to really communicate where a champion should be before they're out in the wild. <laughs> they're out in the wild. What a weird thing to say. And this helps with that. It won't be perfect, which is also why we're integrating players into the charge process as well. By the way, uh, or change process, not charge process. This isn't a credit card. I, I don't think that's true. I think they're putting players in this process so that they don't get as much backlash and they can be like, hey, don't blame us. We uh, beta tested this and we got players on board. Because I'm going to say this again, and I've said this a lot in the last couple days. If it was up to the players, Namor and Cole Obsidian wouldn't have been touched. They still weren't breaking the game to the point that even Scarlet Witch was pre-patch 12.0. And yet, you nerf them. There are still people that are so upset with that. But Kabam likes to pretend that everybody just loves those champions now and uses them. And that's just not true. And they're using that justification in this way, which is also not true. All right. What is the ideal rating for a champion? What insurance do summoners have that buy, uh, have a champion that more subject to being nerfed? A champion is more or less powerful than that rating after release. Would their new revealed power influence a change in rating? Or would the incorrect rating influence change in the champion's kit? There is no such thing as an ideal rating. Every champion will have different ratings depending on where we expect them. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the football game Madden. American football, I should say. Where maybe you've got somebody who has a lot of speed, but they can't catch the ball. Maybe somebody has a big, maybe it's quarterback, has a big arm, but their accuracy is down, right? You're, you're like creating a player with attributes that are, if you max out one category, it might be at the uh, near bottom end of the other. Here's the problem with that, though. There's no denying that there are really, really great champions in this game, and a lot of middle-tier to forgettable champions in the game, and then a lot of trash champions. And here's what I think. Great. So be it. If there were never any buffs to champions again, and we just... Got to look forward to new champions, or we had to put up with the champions we have. I think the community would be happy. There is something emotionally gratifying about landing on a jackpot when you're used to getting bankruptcies. 
This is metaphorical speaking, not actual financial, you know, outcome. I don't know about you, but like if I pull a Groot, I just kind of laugh. Iron package, same thing. Yeah, it's disappointing, but whatever, it happens. It makes the Cosmic Ghost Riders, it makes the Hercules, you name them, it makes it really exciting. That's why I play the game. If everybody was similar, I would be bored out of my mind. And it would make it a lot less fun. And say what you will about the tediousness of uh, Alliance Quest, Alliance War, General Questing, Side Quest, etc. The most fun part of the game is landing on a champion that you've always wanted as a five or six star and being able to rank them up. I think that's just universal. If you make everybody about the same, that takes away most of the fun and the content's going to be stale. It's going to be like a hamster wheel for the most part. I think a lot of people just accepted that. So yeah, I could go on about this for another 12 minutes, but this is already longer than my usual videos. I just think Kabam is once again missing the mark. First off, it's good news that allegedly we will hold Kabam Mike to this, that no champion before March of 2022 is going to be touched. But I don't want to play a game that's balanced. I like having trash champions in the game. I like having Beyond God tier champions in the game. And I realize that most of the time, champions are going to fall in between those two categories. What I don't like is a broken game. Fix the game. Stop worrying about balancing. Do damage control that's actually legit. And uh, we'll keep playing the game. It's as simple as that.